This is the Lifestyle Builders Podcast, show 62. Stop chasing the carrot and design your life with Demir and Carrie Bentley. Mm -hmm. And so it was very hard for me to sort of navigate that at first. And that's where Demir was really helpful in sort of explaining like, this is normal or this is not normal. And <laughs> it's okay to feel really happy and really sad at the same day, at yep. the same hour. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, it was, it's all in the basis of our relationship and creating a life that works for us together. Hi, Ariana here with a quick PSA about why this topic is so important to us. Tom and I know how challenging it can be to start and run a business, to take care of your loved ones, and on top of it all, to keep a healthy relationship with your spouse. It isn't easy, and that is why we created our Lifestyle Builders Mentorship Program. As a special offer during this very special Couples and Entrepreneurship Month, we'd like to invite you to get started with your first month of Lifestyle Builders for only $1. So if you, and your spouse is welcome too, need more strategy, support and guidance in your business and life, plus people who truly care about you and will keep you accountable, sign up now at tomandariana.com slash lbcouples with the code lbcouples. Welcome back to another episode of our Couples and Entrepreneurship Month. Before we dive in with our guests today, I am going to just give you a little bit of info about them. Demir and Carrie Bentley are the husband and wife team behind Life Hack Bootcamp, the productivity and lifestyle design company for high-performing individuals who want to bring sanity back into their lives. They're known for their no BS, no excuses coaching style and passion for creating huge transformation in each of their clients. They're also known for leading by example and constantly pushing the boundaries of lifestyle design, traveling around the world and experimenting with different ways of living. They're members of Elite Forbes Coaches Council, uh, influence of top 25 influencers. Their work has been featured in Forbes, Forbes, Bloomberg, WSJ, HuffPo, and podcasts like Forbes 30 Under 30, Amy Porterfield's Online Marketing Made Easy, The One Thing, and Don't Keep Your Day Job. Carrie and Demir live the nomadic lifestyle, living up to three months at a time in cities around the globe. All right, we had an amazing chat with Demir and Carrie. Uh, we talked about a lot of different things, one of which was roles. Uh, but they attacked roles a little differently, which I love. They did an auction of the roles in both their business and their life. So they kind of listed everything out, what are, what are all the roles, and then you know, top to bottom picked the things that they love to do, the things that both of them maybe weren't, didn't mind doing, and then there were things at the bottom that both of them hated doing. And kind of looking at like how can we lessen those things, how can we delegate those things, or maybe get rid of them altogether. Yeah, well, and you know, part of why I really connected with them was that they both came from a corporate background mm -hmm. like myself. And it was just interesting hearing them, you know, like the, the whole quote that came out was like, you know, dangling the carrot. Uh -huh. And that's a lot of what people in corporate run into is like, you know, just chasing that carrot or chasing the next promotion. And um, it was really cool to hear their transition from corporate into where they're at now. And, you know, like you'll hear that, like, they didn't get a lot of support from like friends and family. Mm -hmm. So just being able to see not only making that transition, but then all the ways that they were really intentional about putting their life first, but also then using principles across life and business to make it all work, like you said, even with defining roles. Yeah, and I think, you know, they shared part of their story of leaving the corporate world, and they were literally working themselves to death dealing with illnesses and, and health issues, and, you know, they talked about the priorities. They looked, they found each other, they talked about the kind of life they wanted to have, and instead of waiting around and trying to deal with all that stuff, they said, nope, we're gonna do it a different way, and they kind of made their own path, which I love. Yeah, and obviously very aligned with kind of what we preach and uh, you know what we help people with, so with that, we'll let you guys get in. Enjoy. All right, you guys, welcome back to another episode of the Lifestyle Builders Podcast and our special Couples and Entrepreneurship Series. Today, we've got Demir and Carrie with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey, good. good. <laughs> We're so pumped to have them on. As you heard in the bio, Demir and Carrie have some pretty cool stuff going on. What I wanted to dig into first, though, was how did you guys first get started in business together? That's Gosh, um, yeah, so it's actually really funny because we both came from completely different backgrounds, and when we had floated the idea of working together, 
all of our friends and family took us aside and they were like, don't do this. Don't do it. You're going to destroy your relationship. I got divorced after a year of working with my husband, you know, just like all these horror stories. And we were kind of like, oh, wow. I mean. Yeah. And we, not, a, not a suggestion either. Yeah. Like, it was uh, like, like, do, do not, not do, do this. this. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a little bit um, scary to go against what everyone was telling us to do. But I'm really glad we did because we just had this strong intuition that we did work so well together and that we wanted to spend more time together instead of just spending time with our coworkers. Yeah, I mean, for those of you who don't know our background, I'm not going to get into the whole how we met story, but you know, the short version is uh, she worked for Kraft Foods uh, International managing a, a, a tiny little billion dollar business you might have heard of called Oscar Mayer Bologna. <laughs> um, and so my company did a deal with her company and um, we, you know, needless to say, one of the things that I walked away from is I've never worked with somebody so seamlessly never admired somebody so much. So maybe unlike other couples who are attracted to each other on another basis, almost like a part of our attraction was how seamlessly and smoothly we worked together and mm -hmm. how much I respected her. I remember there was a meeting um, where she was running a meeting and I was like, wow, this woman can run a meeting. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's not attractive to you, but for me, like when a, when a woman can run a meeting, oh, that just, that just triggers something for me. I love well, it. I'll tell you, like I came from a corporate Turn background as well meeting. and nobody can run a meeting. I mean, <laughs> it, it is crazy how bad most meetings are. Like that was probably the number one thing I had to do when I got into corporate was like, Hey guys, let's figure out how to run effective meetings because everything else stems from there. So I'm, I'm curious, you guys were both obviously in corporate, um, sounds like consulting and then a larger company. How did you guys actually leave? Because your family was already telling you not to like go into business together. Did you both leave at the same time? Did one leave first? Like what did that transition look like? Well, actually it was, it was really clear for us and a lot of people struggle with making that big leap. But for us, we both have stress related illnesses. I have ulcerative colitis, which has affected me almost all my life. And it was getting so bad working in corporate. Mm -hmm. um, and you know how it is, you know, they pay you a lot of money. And so you want to stay because you're just making such good money. But then at the same time, the quality of life isn't so great sometimes. I mean, in my particular case, because of my ulcerative colitis, it was just really, really stressing me out. Um, and it was shaving years off of our life. And Demir had a similar situation. Yeah, I mean, I was running a tech company, which was the one that worked with her company. And, you know, I just realized that I guess I was in on the, on, on the scam. Mm. I realized that, like, so much of it is, you know, either for yourself or for a company, they're putting that carrot out in front of you. And I just realized you never get the carrot. You never, I just finally woke up one day. I was like, I'm never going to get this carrot, am I? Right. And so I, I was, when I met Carrie in a place where I was looking to fundamentally redesign my life um, and put lifestyle first. And I was unwilling to accept that I had to work for something. I was like, I want to make, I want to create a life I love today. And then I want to love it a little bit more tomorrow. Mm. And I want to love it more next week and more next month. But I fundamentally want to start from something today that I love. Yeah. And I think both of us also, we lost um, really close people in our lives young. Mm. And so that sense of, Hey, we don't have until retirement to enjoy ourselves. It needs to happen today because we don't know if we're going to have a next year even. So that was really putting that pressure on us to completely redesign how we lived. Um, and that's why we ended up starting the business together. I got to be honest, like when I met Carrie, it was just everything locked in. Like, I mean, it, not to be sappy, but like, it's like, <laughs> that's a good stuff, be though. You not can to be sappy, sappy but sappy <laughs> warning. Like, you know, when I met her, I was like, just every dimension was like, click, 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 click. And they, you know, they say like, oh, you're going to know, <laughs> you know, you're definitely going to know. And for me, it was oh my God, this is the one. And because we were clicked on lifestyle and we knew we wanted to live a different life and we knew we needed to step away and we knew we worked well together. So it was just, it was just so clear to me. Yeah. You know, what was interesting, same thing with us. Like we met the first day of college and we had people, we told, they called us the married couple. They're like, oh, you guys are going to get married. I'm like, I know. <laughs> um, and then they were like, you, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be planning on that. Like, how do you know? I was like, listen, we know if we weren't in college right now, we'd probably already be married, but mm. we're being smart about it. <laughs> but what was interesting was for us, and it sounds like you guys maybe had a little different path for a handful of years, like everything was seamless. Like the conversations we had, we were aligned on everything. And then once we graduated college, I basically, as like the entrepreneur kind of had this big vision, I was off on my own thing. And she was more on kind of that traditional path, kind of, you know, sold the, 
the traditional path the dream and we started kind of drifting away and that's where we ran into a lot of challenges and then especially as we started working together kind of figuring out our roles and all of that so how did you guys make the transition from you had this seamless stuff going on now you transitioned out you're working together the roles you play and now you're not corporate now you're on your own anymore um, you had maybe the, some of the stress related illnesses I mean starting a business isn't easy how did that whole transition go? <laughs> yeah, no, that's such a good point. And I think every year we encounter something new and different in the relationship that we're like, oh, that's interesting. That wasn't there before. <laughs> but here's the thing is we, again, you know, because we, we put lifestyle first, yeah. we actually put each other first as well. I would say that's even our, our top priority regardless of anything else. And so we don't, when we have conversations or disagreements, it's not starting from a place of, well, I want this for my career and, and you want that. It's starting from a place of, well, we prioritize each other first and foremost. Yeah. So how do we make this work for both of us together? I, oh, that's so, I couldn't triple underline that enough. Like, I think the difference between why we've had so much like unanimity and clarity is that it wasn't, it wasn't, oh, we're choosing Carrie's career and Demir's sacrificing his career or vice versa. Demir's career is going to be the one that we follow and then Carrie's going to, it was literally like we're both tossing away our old lives and we're creating a new life. And the number one optimization point isn't Carrie's happiness or my happiness. It's the family lifestyle that we want to create. And so because of that, odd things get prioritized. Mm. Like we take a nap together every day. I, I am with you. Every day, right? And, and it's funny, people are like, well, I mean, it's an important meeting. Can't you skip your nap? And I'm like, no. Like, it's, it's not just important for our chronic illnesses. It's also important for us to stay connected and stay rested. And it's a fundamental part of the vision that we had when we started this journey. Yeah, exactly. And so if there's something that's getting in the way, usually like an ego thing, right? So for example, he has a lot more experience than me. So when we first started the business together, I kind of felt like it was like his business because it was his idea and he was so charismatic and like definitely the leader of the company. So I felt a little bit sidelined at first, mm. but because he was prioritizing how you know, our relationship would function inside of that, he made sure to, to open up leadership opportunities for me and give me an opportunity just to have my own space within the company. And before you knew it, I very much felt like it, we were 100% equals. Um, you know, and people are requesting example. her, like we, we do private coaching, people are like, mm, can I just have Carrie instead of Demir? So, you know, <laughs> so now we've gotten to the point where it's... <laughs> so to be honest, I, I love when that happens because it was similar for us. Like I had started the businesses and then Ariana kind of came on board and when people started saying, you know, Tom, you're great, but like, can I talk to Ariana? Cause I think she can really help me with this. I'm like, yes, now the rest of the world gets to see what I get to see every day. Yeah. And I mean, to be honest, I struggled with that a lot because I, I wasn't of the entrepreneurial mindset at all when we started that first business 10, 11 years ago now. And it was like, I gradually stepped into some of the roles as we moved along, but it wasn't until we started in the online space that I got really thrown out of my comfort zone. And it took me a while to step into some of those leadership roles and to say like, oh, I am a contributing member of this business and people want to hear from me and people want to listen to what I have to say. So I, I love that I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely not. Because I'm coming from a corporate background. I had no entrepreneurial idea. I mean, maybe I had some spirit, but I didn't understand how to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And so it was very hard for me to sort of navigate that at first. And that's where Demir was really helpful in sort of explaining like, this is normal or this is not normal. <laughs> and it's okay to feel really happy and really sad at the same day, <laughs> at the yep. same hour. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, it was, it's all in the basis of our relationship and creating a life that works for us together. Can I say something else too? You know, one of the things that we did in the very beginning of our marriage, not just the business, but we took, we did this for a personal life and we did it for our business. We, we literally sat down in a real session. This isn't like hypothetical. We literally sat down and probably took us two hours. Our, our, our marriage motto is pull triggers. Right. Like, you know, don't don't get in arguments over decisions. Just make decisions. Just mm. pull triggers together. Right. And, and don't put off till tomorrow what can be decided today. So we're just pull triggers, pull triggers. So we got down and we did a two hour session where we laid out all of the roles that the business would need. And of course, you're an entrepreneur. So it's not like we can hire a marketer and mm -hmm. a operations person or IT. It's just like, here's all the roles. And we and we auctioned them off. 
And so we said, okay, like finance. I hate finance. Carrie loves finance. She said, I'll take finance. I'll handle the, the numbers for the business. And it was like, uh, you know, co curriculum, like actually creating the curriculum. I was like, I felt really passionate about that. I really wanted that. Carrie was like, fine, you can take it. Um, you know, and so we went through until towards the middle. It's it, so at the beginning is what you really want. And towards mm -hmm. the middle of the list becomes like, who hates what less? <laughs> oh, well, Carrie really hates that. And I don't hate it as much. So I guess I'll take it. Right. And then at the end, at the very bottom, it's like things we both hate. And, and we realized that as we got to the bottom, those were things that we could really start thinking about hiring out or, or minimizing, right, in some way. And, I, and, and then we made a sort of solemn pact, which was that no matter what, the person who had that had veto power over the decision moving mm -hmm. forward. So I like to say, you know, Lifehack Bootcamp is not a partnership because we don't, it's not like Carrie needs to come to me with a decision and get my sign off. It's that all of the roles that Carrie's in charge of she has 100% ability to move without my permission. Now, out of, out of uh, you know, a desire to genuinely want to know what I think and out of respect, she'll often come to me and clear like super big mission critical decisions with me. But the point is that she doesn't have to. Mm -hmm. It's courtesy, right? Um, and so in the beginning, yes, there were a little bit of like, me stepping over that line and Carrie having to be like, hey, so by the way, <laughs> your foot's on my side. You know, you need, you need to step back. You know, this is my decision to make. Right. But that's, I mean, that's worked both ways, right? Because it, it really helps us because when you have two people, then you could be split on a decision and then let that derail your entire week because you just don't think the same way. Mm -hmm. So just having a clear sense of hierarchy, I guess, of who's in charge of the end decision and then therefore the end result as well then that's really helped us just make decisions and move past it and, um, and learn how to trust each other too because we both realize that while we both make mistakes, we also really also do a good job at what we do. It, can I just, add, I'll just add one more thing on here. And sorry, we're taking up so much space, but you know, I think <laughs> that is, we, we are here for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> an important element of this, I think, was um, giving that other person enough space to fail. I think as when you're working, a dimension that you get when you're working together with somebody you love that you don't get when you're working together with somebody in corporate is like, if you don't agree with somebody's decision in corporate, well, like it's your career buddy. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, if you want to make the wrong decision, go, go blow yourself up. But, but in a, in a, in a couple's business or in a family business, you, people always think that it's your ego. A lot of times it's you wanting to keep, you're certain that person's going to fail and you're certain that you're the hero who's going to save them from shooting themselves in the right. foot. And so you, you're, you end up fighting, not necessarily because just because you disagree with the decision, because part of you is like, don't you see I'm saving you from yourself? Mm -hmm. Don't you see I'm like, can't you accept my help here? Because I'm so clear, never been clear before in my life that you're about to fail right now in this decision and this will not work. By the way, P.S., fast forward, of all the arguments we've had, first of all, I can never really remember what they were ever about. And two, <laughs> Neither can we. It's never come to pass. Like Carrie's never done something that has ever turned out to be like, oh, well, that was like a massive failure. Of all the times that, there were times when I was like, you're going to fail. And, and of all those times looking back, we, it either wasn't a failure, she was right and I was wrong, or we were able, if I was able to get on her side, we could make it into a win. We could take that strategy and make it win. And I think that just speaks to the fundamental thing, which is, you know, you have to be willing to give that person the space to, to, to fail. Yeah. Right to give them the ability to operate and 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 say like listen I give you permission and when you ask yourself that sorry to ramble but when you ask yourself that am I unwilling to give Carrie the space to fail you'll always say oh well no no I I'll give her that space but then in reality you're not mm -hmm. you know, you're crowded up on her and on her decisions being like you know like a hovering mother like I don't want anything bad to happen with my child you know. So it, it was interesting because you talk about failure there. What I experienced was actually the opposite. Part of what I wanted was to really push her to success because my background is in coaching. And like you said, when I was doing that with corporate clients, I didn't have the emotional tie to them. So it was like when they hired me, it was like, you said you want to get there. We're going to do the deep work and I'm going to ask the tough questions to get you there. When I brought that home and tried to do the work. same thing with Ariana. <laughs> 
<laughs> it did not work. Mm-mm. Nope. But the funny thing with me was it wasn't about not wanting her to fail. I actually did want her he to fail. He preferred anything, obviously. Because fail or succeed. I don't care. I yeah, want well, you to do well something. because what I saw in corporate and what I saw with everyone I worked with was if I can get someone to fail small and often, we can then learn more and build off of those. And then the transformation that comes on the other side is truly amazing. And so I was like, Ariana is great. I, I want her to be able to be even more great. And what I had to realize was that I had to step back and like you said, give that space, but for a completely different reason. Mm-hmm. I had to find other places to listen to somebody else saying pretty much what Tom was saying, but it was coming from <laughs> that other direction. And, and one thing that we have dug into more recently in working with uh, a marriage therapist is the reason that that didn't work is because I had a deep-seated fear of failure that came from my history, my life. I, disappointing my loved ones was like my deepest fear. So he's over here trying to get me to do something. And he's like, I don't care if you fail. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't fail. So, you know, now knowing that it's like, oh, okay. He needed to step away, give me the space so that I could go and talk to somebody and find out, okay, yeah, I'm a little scared, but it's okay. The worst thing that's going to happen is this. I've identified it. I'm going to go forward and do it my way. And then we'll reevaluate and reflect. But one thing I want to jump back to is I love that you guys did the roles breakdown because we did that earlier this year and, and it was the, one and the of the best system. things. Like the we, we, we need to pull smart. the auction system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I wanted to say though is like using that in your personal life is really helpful too yeah. because I know that we we do that in the business and then when we get to like the home life, sometimes it's a struggle to put out those roles and define what they are and then, like you said, go through the auction where you're like, okay, everyone loves this. Let's pick the things we love and then we get down to the things that we dislike and it's like, okay, now who's going to be doing these things? And then we have the kids added in there. So it's like we have these added responsibilities of parent roles that we have to play on top of a marriage role, on top of a living together role. So. I think that's a really helpful exercise for people to do, whether they're in business together or whether you're just married and you just need to kind of have some more definition and some some boundaries. Yeah, I mean, to us, the personal life is just as important as the business life because we want to be enjoying our time when we're not working. Mm-hmm. And that's a big reason why we actually choose to live in Columbia right now um, is because a lot of those annoying personal tasks that in the States or wherever else we would have to do ourselves mm. are incredibly inexpensive to outsource here in Colombia. So we have someone who cooks all of our food and cleans our house and <laughs> helps us take care of the dog. I mean, we don't have kids, but, but when we the do dog have is kids. like, when you well, do we have kids, we'll have exactly. Yeah. And so we completely relate to that. Of just, Hey, you know, we want our off time to be as like way more amazing than our at work time. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, it's interesting, I, just to jump back a little bit, uh, one of the things that really perked up in my ears was this idea of coaching each other. Yeah. So first of all, I just want to say, Carrie loves my coaching. <laughs> <laughs> always asking me, Demir, can you give me some more of that good, good coaching that you got? <laughs> now, um, we went through a personal development. Um, one of our commitments is to do a personal development program every year. And, and we don't even care what it is. It's just, it's, it's more of a commitment to stay connected to, to moving forward. Mm-hmm. And it's a commitment we make to each other So that I know that I'm with a partner who, even if she's not changing in the way that I want her to change, is changing, is Mm -hmm. committed to moving forward. That is so important because so many, so like so often the change I want to see in you isn't the change that you're making right now. But it's comforting to know that you are in a process of change because it is easy to get into a place where you're not, you're not pushing yourself. You're not developing yourself. And so the thing with Carrie is Carrie and I can take comfort that we're always in the process of change and moving ourselves forward, even if maybe she's not crazy about, you know, she, she's like, why are you changing this thing? You, you know, I want you to change this thing right now. Right? <laughs> it's never the right timing. But it's interesting. One of the, these programs that we took, one of the coaches looked at me directly and just pointed right in my face and said, the moment you ma- married Carrie, you abdicated your opportunity to coach her. And I was like, what? No. Because <laughs> in my mind, I was like, no, she's like, she sees where I've got my, like a booger in my nose and she tells me, and then I see where she's got a booger in her nose. And I tell, we're like covering each other's back. Right. And he was like, no, <laughs> your, your position is 100% support. You're her stability. You're her support. You're her you're her partner, her teammate, right? She can get coaching, high quality coaching too. 
in an, any number of places if and when she wants it. That is not your role. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, exactly. For both of us, really, it goes both ways. So if, if we want the other person to improve in some area, then it's not our job to tell them. But it, we, again, like Demir was saying, we know that we're in the process of constantly finding other coaches, finding personal development programs to take, and we invariably get there, really. And if, if we, even if we don't, then it's like, hey, it's an opportunity to look at yourself and ask yourself, why is that bothering me so much? Mm -hmm. It's not something about them. It's something that's about you that needs to change. I'll tell you that one change. Like me just stepping, and, and, and coaching in any respect, like, you know, sometimes when we do videos together, and you, if you want to talk about the real stuff, <laughs> you want to, want to read, <laughs> feel the window, real let's here. get real. Like, the, probably the only time that we fought in the last two years is when we do videos together. So I don't know what it is about doing videos together, but a big part of that was that Carrie already had, like, feelings and emotions. I won't try to describe what she felt, but certainly wasn't the easiest thing in the world mm -hmm. for her to do. Yeah, you know? it was, it's stressful. I think she's amazing. So I'm like, why are you stressed out? You look great. But she's having... Like it's a high anxiety moment for her. And then here I come with like, say this, do this, don't do this. Right. And, and like, just like, you know, it's like, it's like everything's covered with, with gas and then I'm lighting like a so, so this is how it would go. It would be like, hi everybody. We're Demir and Carrie from Lifehack Bootcamp. Then he'd be like, he'd be like, no, if we do that again, I'd be like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll cut that part out. Yeah, okay. Yeah, go yeah. again. So that's literally how it went, was like fight and then say something. One of our best videos, and I don't know how this happened, but one of our best videos was like it took us two hours to film like a 25-minute video yeah. because we were literally having a fight. So we would say some lines, and then we would get in a fight, and then we would say some more lines, and we would like get in a fight, and it was all coming from me. It was coming from me being a controller. It was coming from me trying to impose my coaching, which is really my ego and my will on it, and not giving her the space to – discover who she wanted to be and how she wanted to be on camera and how she wanted to deliver. And so, you know, we had to bring that rule, which is already there. And I had to realize mm -hmm. I'm breaking that rule. I'm just breaking it in a new place. I'm breaking yeah. it. Like, so I, I knew not to coach her in the business. I knew not to coach her in her, her personal development. But for some reason, when we stepped into video, I was like, Oh, now I'm going to coach again. Right. So I have right. to constantly be on the lookout for that. Well, what's so interesting was just that one thing, like removing the coaching element and just saying, we are never going to tell each other what to do or how to say it in a video. That completely changed the situation. But then in terms of us actually moving forward and improving ourselves on camera, we ended up hiring his brother as a speaking coach for us separately. Because the truth was, we weren't even giving each other the right coaching. Because <laughs> neither of us knew how to be good on camera. So, Two people who don't know anything. Coaching each arguing other. Arguing about, yeah, you know. So it That's really, hilarious. Well, really I was going to say, I had a similar thing um, from our personal life, it was whenever she would bring a problem, I'm a problem solver. Mm -hmm. So every time a problem would come up, I'd be like, all right, we could do this. How are we going to do this? We do this. And then the, the one thing that changed everything was like, she doesn't want me to solve her problems most of the time. So instead of automatically jumping into problem solving mode, asking the question, you know, do you want help with this or do you just want me to listen? And it was like, once I changed that, and to your point, there's certain contexts where that almost like goes out the window and I jump right back in. <laughs> But just thinking about that has helped so much because now it's not me trying to get in and, and coach, but it's giving that space and then really giving her what she needs. Yeah. Um, well, and he's such a high achiever. Like that is his thing. He can't stand when he can't solve a problem. And I had to <laughs> literally say to him, it's okay if I come to you and, and talk about some things that I'm frustrated with and you don't have the answer. <laughs> Like I, sometimes I'm a very emotional person. Sometimes something is, I just need to get it out of my head and then I walk away and I'm completely fine. And he's over here like sitting, Oh, I got to solve this problem. How do I fix this? And she's so unhappy. And Oh my God, I'm like, listen, I'm not unhappy. I was just frustrated for a very short moment in time. I needed to talk to you about it because you're my partner. You're my best friend. Now I'm done. I'm good. You know? And it was, it was one of those like essential pieces that we had to figure out in our relationship because it was causing so many back and forth. Like he would come at me with like, Oh, let's solve it. He'd ask me all these questions. I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't have the answer. I'm just frustrated. I just wanted You're to share that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is so yeah, true. I would say that that probably resonates with a lot of couples certainly resonates with us as, as well. Um, going both ways, I would say. Just understanding like who, who one person wants their, their partner to be in that, in that moment and being okay with them, finding their own happiness. 
because you're actually not responsible for the other person's happiness. Like they're a completely mm-hmm. fully formed mm-hmm. human adult. They can be <laughs> happy. You know, you don't have to make them happy. And so I think, especially for us, it's been like that, like, because especially because of my, um, if my stress related illness, my ulcerative colitis, it affects my mood a lot of the time, especially yeah. if I'm having a flare up where I just am not a happy person. Like I'm not no. like super angry, but I'm definitely not the best version of myself. I'll just put it that way. And so Demir will sometimes try to make me happy or try to figure out what's wrong that he can fix. People pleaser. Yeah, which is really <laughs> sweet, obviously, but it's also just, it's not his responsibility to do that. You know, that's on, that's on me. I get to do that. Well, it's funny because, uh, you know, one of my mottos that I've come up with for, for our marriage is let Carrie be Carrie, right? Like, so for me, because, you know, my, my childhood was like a tumultuous childhood and I developed the personality of like, I'm just going to go and try to make everybody okay. I just want everything to be okay. Everybody needs to be okay. And so when somebody's not okay, when they're living in stress or frustration or fear or anxiety, part of me is not okay. I'm like, mm-hmm. for me to relax, you need to be relaxed, right? right? <laughs> um, and so, so that was crazy because, you know, you, you guys have to understand there's something weird about my brain. Like I tell Carrie it should be studied by science because I, I wake up happy. I'm happy 100% of the day, and I go to sleep happy. What like, one one time? Have a deformed brain. And he it's was deformed a, to happiness. <laughs> it's so true because one time he was just feeling a little bit down. I guess just a little bit like not happy, and he was like, "Carrie, what's this feeling? Why do I feel like this? I don't like it." I'm like, "You're, you're just not happy," and like, that's how most people are. Like, all the time. 100% of the time, he's like, "I don't like this. I don't, I don't like this at all." At all. <laughs> Oh my gosh. That's really, I, I feel you a little, I'm the people pleaser of the, of the relationship for sure. Uh, but I also get that whole, I'm, I'm just not happy sometimes as a woman hormones just screw you over. And especially after kids, like my hormones are not what they were before. I don't know what they are. Some days I just wake up and I'm in a bad mood and right. I feel like he had to come to terms with like, there is nothing I can do to solve this. I've tried to get to the, before I would just kind of walk around. Now I will like say something. Hey, just so you know, <laughs> I am not a hundred percent today. I'm just going to put that out there because otherwise he goes into fixer mode or he thinks something's wrong that he did. I'm like, no, nothing you did. It's just my day today. I'm going to work through it. I'll figure out how to do what I need to do. Um, and then, you know, it's like, once I get through that day, usually I'm back to my normal self, but it's hard when there's all these expectations out there. You know, people have expectations of how you should be showing up in your business. Your partner has expectations of how you should be showing up in your relationship. Your kids have expectations of how you should be showing up as a parent. So it's like trying to make sure that you're showing up, but also being true to yourself and letting yourself have a bad day sometimes. I think we all get that vibe from, you know, everyone on the internet, you should always be happy. You should always be loving life and all of this stuff. And it's like, sometimes it's okay to have an off day and to accept that, feel the feelings and move on and make sure that next, the, tomorrow is a better day. Totally. Totally. Yeah. That's, that, I mean, that, that just goes to the essence of, you know, let Carrie be Carrie. It's just like, you know, just let her be her, let her give her, you know, that space to deal with it. And I think, you know, on the cutting edge of our relationship right now, because we're sort of like talking about stuff that we've dealt with in the past. But I mean, I think right now, a lot of it tends to be, you know, because our business is doing better now. Mm -hmm. And so then you get problems that you get high class problems, but you, nobody realizes that high class problems still feel very much like yes. problems, right? Yes, they do. And so everybody says, oh, I've got high class problems. Like those feel like problems. So like the business is doing better now. And so it means that, you know, if we're going to shine something, it used to be like, if we're going to be like, ah, screw it, we're not going to do that. Then we'd just be taking a pass on like, I don't know, a couple bucks. Mm-hmm. Now if we say, screw it, we're not going to do that. We know that what we're taking a pass on is like $20,000. It's like, and so the stakes get higher, like, you know, and, and it makes it harder to defend the basic premise of the relationship, which is that the family and the relationship is the most important, not money. But since we're such hard charging A plus people, we're like, oh, there's, you know, 40, a $40,000 opportunity there. Let's just not sleep and go get that, <laughs> you know? Uh, so that's yeah. always a, a, a danger lurking in our relationship. And it just gets magnified more and more. It feels like we have to commit and recommit yeah. to the basic premise of our relationship. Like every extra 100,000 we make in the business almost mm-hmm. needs to come back and recommit all over again. Um, and, and it brings up different insecurities of like, do we even deserve this success? And mm-hmm. what does that mean about us? And then sometimes we take our foot off the pedal because 
We don't actually think that we should grow the business more. Just mm-hmm. weird stuff like that comes up, but definitely keeping, keeping the priorities at front and center, which is each other and our personal health. And so like an example of that is next week, we just decided yesterday to book a five-day off grid vacation nice because we wanted it Mm -hmm. and the business was in a place where sure are we going to miss out on money if we do that of course but not so much that we that we don't deserve to take it Mm -hmm. well i'm so glad you guys brought this up because you know um in coaching like i used to coach a lot of corporate people um you know leaders and that type of thing and then when we shifted to entrepreneurs we kind of saw this new thing where people would basically go for you know, not having a lot and being in this like survive mode where it's like, I'm just trying to get the business working. I'm trying to get all this problem solved. And then we're in that mode sometimes for like years. And then we get to a point where suddenly all that hard work pays off. And I think as entrepreneurs, we don't know how to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And especially when you're in a relationship that amplifies more because everyone's got their own background with money and growing up and stories we tell ourselves. And I love what you guys said earlier about, you know, it's, your background, my background, but now it's ours. And a lot of what I'm kind of hearing as we go through this conversation is, um, I think actually stuff that I like learned in corporate, like a mission statement, Mm. right? Like, you know, having a mission statement for your marriage, your core values, like your sayings that you go back, like carry, like carry be carry. (laughs) But, but what I'm kind of hearing is that you guys are taking all of these things and putting them into your life. And then what that does is it serves that every time you do one of these levels up, it kind of allows you to come back and ground to those core things that are important, even though all this change is going on. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I know for us, it's, like, I, sorry, it's funny that you say that the way that I put that is everything breaks at every level of success. Absolutely. So I love that you're saying, you're, it's so much gentler. You're grounding. <laughs> you're re-grounding. You're re-grounding. I would put it like I, all of your agreements, all of your system, every, every, every new level, everything breaks. You have to go build it again. I like Tom's way. I like better. Tom's way better. <laughs> but, but you're spot on because, you know, a lot of times, like when I talk to somebody, I can usually tell if they're getting close to that breaking point as you mm-hmm. describe it because that is what happens and like one of the quotes I always go back to is what got you here won't get you there that applies in business and that definitely applies in life so I love the fact that we're talking about not only the the business stuff and how we grow that but the relationship is even more important to then focus on and doing the development and keep moving forward I think just a lot of really good themes that we're getting into here mm-hmm. yeah I love it. So Carrie and Demir, um, you can each answer if you want. What is one thing that you want listeners to take away from your story and and your show here with us today? Um, I guess what I would want people to take away is just if you you aren't happy with the current lifestyle you're leading, figure out what are the guardrails that you would want to set up to, Mm -hmm. to design a life that you really love. What's really, really important to you? Because those are sort of the the values or principles that are going to really make you happy in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Can I, can I high five you through the screen? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, I would say one thing is, um, as unromantic as this sounds, it, marriage is a logistics operation. First and foremost, we want to make it a romance operation, but it's actually a logistics operation. And so, you know, we're productivity coaches, um, and that's what we do. And so maybe I'm speaking my own book here, but I, I genuinely believe this. We've had people who've had like decades long marriage problems come and learn how to do work together and work more effectively together. And a lot of those symptoms, although we didn't deal with those, a lot of those just disappeared because at the end of the day, this, this is the person, yes, you love them. Yes. You're romantically and physically attracted to them, but the journey, that's the journey you were on. The journey you're going on is a journey of responsibility mm-hmm. and multiple roles and like a lots of lots of moving parts and if you suck at doing things together <laughs> if you're really bad at being partners together and taking care of that logistics even if you're not in a business together because let's put it yeah. this way like you know like having a family is a big mm-hmm. operation right mm-hmm. and so there's kids that need to be here and dates that need to be remembered right and if you suck at that then you're going to do it badly. You're going to lose time. You're going to lose goodwill. You're going to lose money. There's going to be nothing left over at the end for you guys to have that romance. And so I think one of the best things that Carrie and I have just always seen eye to eye about is that first and foremost, the first role we play is being a solid partner to each other and speaking the same logistics and productivity language so that we have lots of time, money, goodwill, cognitive load left over to look at each other and be like, okay, great, now let's have fun. Now let's go do something amazing, right? And I think people flip it. They try to put that romance first and think Mm -hmm. if the romance is there, 
then everything else will just somehow magically happen. And, and maybe this is anti-romantic, but I think it's the opposite. Yeah. When you're really operating powerfully and high-fiving your significant other, it creates that goodwill and that time and space and energy to create that romance. I'll, I'll put that even in, in my own words, which would be, hey, you know, if you're frustrated with your partner because you're not working well together, you know, and they're not taking out the trash or whatever it is, no amount of candlelit dinners and rose petals is going to fix it. It's just going to yep. paper it over. Yeah, I love that so much. And I, I don't think you're being unromantic. I think it is, I mean, marriage is work. People say that, but I don't think anyone really thinks about that or really looks at like, oh yeah, that is true. Marriage is work. And if you're looking at it as work and as you have a responsibility and your partner has a responsibility, it makes everything so much more seamless. You know, we talked about that seamless relationship. Everyone always, oh, well, they, they're just so good together. And I wish our life was like that. You can do that too, but you have to put the work in and your partner has to be pulling, put, willing to put the work in as well. So I love both of them. Well, and, and I love how we're getting like really nerdy here about this stuff, but, but that's really what it is. So it's not so much about um, the kind of in it, it's more of the on it. And if you understand the process of how you, you know, work together, or the process of how you fight or, you know, the process of how you come up with those roles and work through those things, like that's what it really comes down to. And when those things, like, you know, if someone's arguing because their husband or they're angry because their husband isn't taking out the trash, to your point, that's going to continue coming up until you take care of that. But once that's then resolved, it makes a lot of the other stuff easier. So I, I love the way both of you guys frame that because it was the same thing with two different perspectives, but I think so important. Yeah. All right. Carrie, Demir, I know people are going to want to come and find you and learn more about you and your, your life hack boot camp and all your productivity tips. So where is the best place for them to do that? Yeah. So the best place is to check out our website. It's lifehackbootcamp.com. And we offer a lot of great productivity tips just for free on the website. And you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, which are all linked on the website. Yeah, and I think, you know, just to explain to people what our flavor of ice cream is, you know, <laughs> come check us out if you're the kind of person who feels like there's more in the gas tank and you're committed to living your best systems, your best mindsets. Our purpose, our mission is to help people who know they can do more realize their full potential, not in order to work more but in order to create a life that really works for them, create the life of their dreams. So if you're looking for productivity for the purpose of creating the life of your dreams, that's what we do. Awesome. I love it. Absolutely. And, and that's what we're about as well. So if you guys are loving this conversation, <laughs> definitely go check these guys out. All right, you guys, it's been another great episode with Tom and Ariana, your hosts and lifestyle builders. And we want to extend a very special thank you to you, Carrie and Demir for coming on the show and sharing all the wisdom. Thank you guys so much for coming on today course. Thank you. Thank you guys. All right. And for all the listeners, I want you guys to remember it's your life, your business, your way. We'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, we hope you enjoyed this episode. If you know another entrepreneur who may benefit from hearing this show, we would so appreciate you being a good friend and sharing it with them. And just a reminder as a special offer during this super special couples and entrepreneurship month, We'd like to invite you to get started with your first month of Lifestyle Builders for only $1. Sign up now at tomandariana.com slash lbcouples with the promo code lbcouples. Are you a Lifestyle Builders podcast fan? We'd love to hear from you. Head on over to tomandariana.com slash iTunes and leave us a review.